After two decades of partnership, which was hailed as a post-Cold War collaboration for the good of humanity, Russia has announced that it will walk out of the International Space Station after 2024. More than 20 years ago, two old rivals joined forces to launch the International Space Station, ISS. Now Russia will walk out of this two-decade-long partnership on the ISS that shaped space exploration in the post-Cold War world. The decision to leave the station after 2024 has been made, said the newly appointed Russian space agency Roscosmos, Chief Yuri Borisov told President Vladimir Putin. While the ISS is regarded as the most complex engineering, scientific, and collaborative human feat ever managed, Russia will opt out of the ISS after 2024 and concentrate on building its own competing outer space infrastructure. The development had been on the cards ever since relations between Russia and the West became increasingly strained due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and Russian forces marched towards Kyiv nearly four months ago, in one of the bloodiest battles of the new decade. While the announcement does come as a surprise for many, the heated political turmoil on the ground has asked the hopes of the rivals to continue to work together beyond Earth. Russia and the United States have worked side by side on the ISS, which has been in orbit since 1998. The ISS lodges a series of research projects that couldn't be conducted anywhere else. Experiments on how long-term weightlessness affects the human body can't be conducted anywhere else. It is the only place to test technologies that will take humankind further into space. To date, CSA and Roscosmos have been conducting several projects on the ISS, including space radiation analysis to allow humans to live longer off the Earth. These partnerships and collaborations using Russian technology and parts of the Russian segment of ISS have increased the yield of Canadian research, Sirik said. MDA, the Ontario-based company behind the Canadarm2 on the ISS, and a key Canadian company involved with the station, declined to comment. Before assuming office, Borisov was in charge of the weapons industry. Yuri Borisov, the Roscosmos chief, has been vying for ending the relationship, which was a symbol of the post-Cold War world. The announcement is being looked at as his first acts to please his bosses in the Kremlin. Borisov told Putin, Of course we will fulfill our obligations to our partners, but the decision to leave the station after 2024 has been made. The announcement opens way for Moscow's long-term plan of launching its station in orbit. NASA has repeatedly highlighted that its astronauts and Russian cosmonauts aboard the station keep working side by side as they have for years. Whatever the turmoil is on the ground, they have shown real signs of friendship. Earlier this year, when cosmonaut Anton Shkoplerov handed over command of the station to NASA's Thomas Marshburn, he said that while people have problems on Earth, on orbit we are one crew. Shkoplerov called the space station a symbol of friendship and cooperation, and a symbol of the future of exploration in space. Up until NASA landed the first human on the moon, Russia had been the leader in space exploration. Russia's major source of national pride, sending the first man into space in 1961, and launching the first satellite four years later had been shattered with the moon landing. I think that by this time we will start putting together a Russian orbital station, Borisov added, calling it the space program's main priority. Good, Putin replied in comments released by the Kremlin. Until now, space exploration was one of the few areas where cooperation between Russia and the United States and its allies had not been wrecked by tensions over Ukraine and elsewhere. Russian space agency remains a shadow of its former self as per experts. It has suffered a series of setbacks, including corruption scandals and the loss of several satellites and other spacecraft in recent years. Borisov, the successor of the firebrand nationalist politician, known for his bombastic statements and eccentric behavior, said the space industry was in a difficult situation. Russia is currently responsible for cosmonauts, technology, and transport systems in the ISS. While the US constructed one half of the station launched in 1998, Russia mostly built the other half. The ISS was originally hatched with the intent of sharing technology between two countries. To clarify this, NASA's solar panels provide most of the power to the station. While Russian technology balances the ISS, holding it where it needs to be in orbit around Earth. Sharing resources to perform research in space has been a highlight of the ISS program, Sirik said. 
Moreover, Russia has been reliable in transporting cosmonauts to the station for recent missions. NASA rented out transportation missions to private firms like SpaceX. To be quite frank, the US and the rest of the world still doesn't have a viable, well-tested solution to get to the ISS, Rahman from Sidrat Research said. Russian space vehicles have been the reliable ones to get people to the ISS. In case Moscow quits as intended, fetching replacement parts for Russian-made pieces of the station is sure to be challenging in light of sanctions and general supply chain issues in building new parts from scratch. Beijing will receive the news well. Beijing is building its space station, Tiangong, which is coming to completion by the end of the year. The latest development is expected to boost chances for the Chinese National Space Administration to lure not just scientific research proposals, but also investments. There are already plans in place to deorbit the ISS by the end of the decade, so China does have a chance to rule as of now. When it comes to space exploration, Exploration, Moscow and Beijing have already been vibing. The two also have plans to jointly develop a research base on the moon. The plans were unveiled in June last year. Named Joint International Lunar Research Station ILRS, the plan includes building facilities both on the surface and in the lunar orbit. While the final location of the lunar base is undecided, initial studies put the Amundsen Crater on the South Pole as a potential site. Private companies will now have their hands full with Russia's withdrawal from the space station. The laboratory requires a permanent presence and funding to sustain itself, so private companies are now on the hunt for a seat. Not only will private sectors bring new research, but also major dollars for NASA to keep pushing it till 2030. The announcement marks the beginning of the end of an era. The space station, which has been the center of scientific research outside the planet for over two decades, will lose one of its founding fathers. Nearly 110 countries have been part of research and experimentation done in zero gravity on the station that flies at 27,576 miles per hour about 400 kilometers above the planet. It's unclear if Russia's recent move could hearken a return to the 1980s and fears over space-based lasers, or the Star Wars program to shoot down intercontinental ballistic missiles. With all that being said, it's not immediately clear what the decision means for the future of the ISS and the US space agency. NASA says it has not received any formal notice from Russia of its plans. Former ISS commander and retired U.S. astronaut Dr. Leroy Chiao assumes that it is unlikely for Russia to leave the project. I think this is posturing by the Russians. They don't have the money to build their station and it would take several years to do it. They've got nothing else if they go this route, he told the BBC. The bottom line is that if the withdrawal happens, the move is likely to ratchet up a crisis for military planners and reduce hopes for cooperation on joint scientific projects for the benefit of humankind. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for future updates. For future.